Hey, what's up, YouTube? Leo Sheng here, host of the Extreme Philly Fishing Channel. Today is June 20th, 2017, my third day down here in Rhode Island, South Kingstown. Oh man, finally I found a little bit of time to come out here and actually do some fishing. This family trip has been really, really active, guys. So, you know, it's, it's been tough, you know what I'm saying? But anyways, I'm here at the Narrow River today. Never been here before. This is going to be my 71st uh, outing of this year. I found this place very close to the cabin where we are renting called the Narrow River Fishing Area. As you can see, okay, developed by the Rhode Island Division of Fish and Wildlife with federal fisheries funds, you know. It is really the only piece of land around these areas that is public. You know what I'm saying? For you to fish from shore. So, you know, I, I took a look at the regulations. It says here that it's good to go. I gotta get my stuff set up. I have no idea what is here, even if there is something. So we will find out. Stay tuned. So you guys may or may not know this from watching Extreme Fully Fishing, but every time I come to a new spot, like the place where I am right now, right, the narrow river, the first thing that I do is I test the waters, right? And that means I gotta find how deep this place is out there. So I tied on a one ounce pyramid sinker right here, right? I don't know what species are around here. I don't even know if this is brackish water or 100% fresh water, which is why we are going to be using shrimp from the supermarket as bait today just in case you know but anyways i gotta cast this one ounce out there and we gotta find out how deep this place really is okay so there we go let's see let's see okay so it's about four or five feet out there okay and it's got a lot of grass or it seems to get a lot of grass there's a drop i can see because when i reel it in i can feel that it comes up a little bit you know you can feel this type of thing so about three four feet out there I, I would say five feet max muddy bottom with plenty of grass check this out huh plenty of grass look at this plenty of grass okay and knowing these things i know because of the grass i am not going to use something like a carolina rig because if i use something like a, a, a carolina rig my shrimp is gonna be all under on that grass right so i'm gonna use something similar to a high low rig or a dropper loop rig so that i have the sinker all the way down and maybe a little hook around here or maybe a little bit higher so that the fish that passes by can see the shrimp right unless you have catfish in a place like this you do a carolina rig and you put your shrimp right in the middle of the vegetation if they don't have the sense of smell and everything you know you are not going to catch fish so let's do the setup now and uh, hopefully we will land some fish around here that's a that's a bite that's a bite oh i think my dad got a fish on a lot of grass but he's got some fish on. Yeah, I think he's got a fish on. He's got a lot of grass there. Because this, this river right here is definitely very weedy. You know what I'm saying? Oh, there's, there's a fish on, dude. Holy moly. It's an eel, dude. It's like a man. That's a huge ass eel, too, guys. Wow, dude, we got our cut bait for the day. This is an American eel. Look at this. Oh, dude, this is a gigantic American eel. <laughs> Nacer, Nacer, we got our cut bait right here, guys. This is going to be cut bait. Good cut bait, man. I gotta tell you something I never thought it was going to be the day where I was going to leap an American eel no kidding this is the biggest eel I've ever seen around these areas I mean I don't usually fish here but this is like a big eel dude let's measure let's measure this eel let's see how big this eel really is okay 
so this this little gripper right here is 0 0.11 0 0.11 okay i gotta measure how big this eel is we gotta put the weight here and the duck 0.11 uh, he says it's about a pound and a little bit more. Let's see. Holy moly, this is a 1.8 pounds American eel. This is almost a two pounder eel, dude. You know what? We're going to do a catch and cook, boys. We're going to do a catch and cook with this American eel, I think. I don't know. We're going to either save it as bait or do a catch and cook. We will see. We will see. But we are definitely taking this bad boy here. Maybe chop it up. Catching some different types of fish here. We'll see. Got a small bite on this one here. Is it all? Son. Man, I had a small bites on this one here, but a bunch of grass just came up. I think I got a fish on. Oh, look at that. I got something on. Oh, it's a huge eel. Goodness gracious. Good bait though, good bait. We're gonna save this eel. So apparently the narrow river is filled with American eel. Look at that. What a beast. Man, I had a bite very close by. I thought finally a decent fish. But no, Anguilla hostrata. Look at that. A smaller one than my dad. Maybe I'm gonna really change to cut bait or something. Or maybe we're gonna stick with shrimp. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. Eel day here on the river. Oof. Let's see. Put it all. I think I got one on. Small one. What we got? Oh, it's a white perch. Oh, <laughs> uh, white perch. Check this out, guys. Moroni Americana. A beauty, beautiful, good eating fish too, you know? Good beige. Definitely didn't expect to see a white perch around these areas. My first white perch from Rhode Island. Little dude, maybe the white perch are moving in now. You know what I'm saying? All right, white perch. It is your lucky day that today we are only eating the eel and not perch. Whoa, 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 whoa. wait, wait, wait. You're going to survive, right? You're not going to die on me. If it dies on me, I use it as cut, as cut bait. You know what I'm saying? But let's see, let's see. Let's see. It seems to be all right. It wasn't outside of the water for too long. Can you swim? Whoa, 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 okay, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. All right, it's gone. Quick update, I'm still here at the narrow river. It's about 8 p.m. right now, almost sunset. I still got my two rods in the water right over there. My dad over here, we got my sister, my brother-in-law. We're all trying to catch some more fish, you know? But I gotta tell you something. This river, this is my first time here, as you guys know. This river is quite hard to fish. Two things that caught my eye right away, right? Number one, the amount of grass that goes into this river is unbelievable. We came here when the tide was going from low to high. Pretty much one hour before high tide, we're fishing now, is lack tide, which is why the bite really died down but we were catching grass and grass and grass cast after cast okay so a lot of grass over here for sure second thing about this river is just i don't know what the species of fish are in this river i talked to the locals and the locals told me sometimes the scup passes over here around this time of the year there are some schoolies right it's dry bass the moroni sexatilis but today apparently it was an American eel type of day, you know, the Anguilla Hostrata, right? We're gonna do a little catch and cook. I'm gonna show you guys how it is done because American eel are indeed truly delicious. And the Rhode Island regulation says that one person with a fishing license can catch 25 a day, 12 inches minimum size, right? So let me go back to the kitchen. I gotta show you guys, actually the family is gonna show you guys how it is done guys guys we are back in philadelphia no longer in rhode island welcome to my kitchen check this out this is where we are going to be doing the cooking portion of the american eel 
here, right? Really small, cozy kitchen. One thing I'm gonna tell you guys before we start the cooking, cooking process is that in this video, the recipe for this fish, the American eel, is quite different from the last catch and cook that I posted on the channel, okay? The pinfish catch and cook, if you haven't checked yet, go there, make sure you watch and check the video. That, is a, that was a very simple recipe. In this video, we are going to be cooking a very authentic Chinese dish with American eel, okay? I'm here with my dad, the guy who's going to be cooking in this video, Master Chef, um, let's call him George. Uh, let's ask him what is the name of the dish to begin with. That is the dish that we will be cooking today. And look, I gotta show you guys very quickly the ingredients that you need for this dish, okay? Right over here, we have the set of ingredients all ready for you guys. I would like to point out, right, that the recipe and the quantity of each ingredient is in the description of the video, okay? Everything is in the description of the video. We got here the good old shoyu, as you guys probably know, soy sauce. We got here the Chinese cooking wine that you can find in really any Asian market around your area. I think Amazon.com got it as well. We got here four main ingredients for this dish. Peppers, these are optional, right? Only if you like spicy food, you add the peppers. We got here the scallions, we got here the good old garlic, and the ginger, a little bit of sugar, and we got here the American eel already all cleaned up, right? The anguilla hostrata. We cut the head off and we cleaned the belly. We got two of them here. Now, please pay attention to this video. We are not cooking both of them, okay? For the quantity in this video, we will need only one and a half pound of fish, which will be really just the big American eel, all right? So we're gonna get started on working the ingredients and I'm gonna show you guys, actually, my dad is gonna show you guys how it is done. Let's get started. So as you guys can see, my father is working on the ingredients there at the back, right? And, and believe it or not, he is like a master chef, okay? He really cooks some amazing food. So once he's done preparing all the ingredients, I gotta show you guys what are like the final, how the final ingredients are supposed to look like. Be right back. As you guys can see here, we are done working on the ingredients. They are all beautifully done right here. And look, we have not touched the soy sauce, the Chinese cooking wine, or the sugar, right? But the fish, we have chopped up the fish. Check this out. We have chopped up the fish in about two inches long strips okay this is a fat eel but i mean it doesn't matter how fat or thin it is right two inches is usually good for the hong shao yu as you guys may have realized right that just means that the name of this dish in english is chinese braised fish right and here we go the other ingredients here right the garlic was just thinly chopped same thing with the ginger, right? Just the strips. Actually, look looks like French fries, right? And then we have the scallions. My dad divided it in two parts, right? The leaves. And then here you have the base. And the little pepper here all the way down. I'm just gonna move a little bit for you guys to see, right? Again, he likes to chop it vertical because it's going to look very, very beautiful when we cook it. I gotta call my dad now. He is the master chef. We gotta get this cooking started we are starting the cooking process here i'm gonna guide you guys step by step on, on how to prepare this chinese braised fish okay as you guys can see my dad already turned on the the heat right it is on high we are getting the pan piping hot and ready he's got a little bit of olive oil on the side like i said all quantities are in the description of the video okay just a little bit of olive oil make sure it is piping hot 
Check this out, uh, I think the oil is about right. You can kind of know from experience, right, when the oil is right, because the texture and the looks of the oil just changes, right? So first step, put the garlic, the scallion, and the ginger in. This is a very traditional Chinese move for dishes like this, you know? You just uh, gotta have that aroma coming out of your pan. At this step of the cooking, you can kind of uh, see, you know, and feel the aroma in the air as the ingredients cook. It is truly like, uh, you can smell it, you know? It is a wonderful smell. There we go. When the garlic gets a little bit brown, golden brown, you put the pieces of eel in because now you just got to stir fry the whole thing here in oil. So at this portion of the cooking, as you guys can see, right, my dad is going to add the Chinese cooking, cooking wine right there. And uh, the objective of adding that in the dish is to remove the fishiness of the fish. Then we put in the shoyu in, check that out, boom, beautiful, to add a little bit of color. And I hope you guys realize, right, that it's stir frying the fish, Ooh, all right, the sugar goes in as well. And as I was saying, I hope you guys realize, right, that putting the eel together with the garlic, the ginger, and the scallion at the beginning of the cooking process was really so that the fish can get the flavors, you know, of those condiments inside of it, you know. This dish here is a traditional Chinese dish. You guys can see it's already turning out to be beautiful, right? This thing is gonna be delish, man. Gotta use the hot water, guys. Check that out. Huh? Put just a little bit of hot water in. This is when you gotta braise the fish, right? So the sauce gets a little bit thinner, right? And this is the part where it boils and cooks the fish throughout. A little bit more of water there we go huh? the recipe as I said is all in the description of the video all quantities okay so once it gets to this point check this out huh? looks beautiful here all you need to do really is just put it on top 15 minutes so it's been 15 minutes I'm here doing a video for you guys on YouTube right the salt water videos that you guys probably watched already and I gotta tell you man it smells really good right now the whole house all right so let's go check it out how it is right now after 15 minutes the sauce should have been reduced and the eel should really have the color of the soy sauce you know it is smelling freaking good okay well, we can kind of have 15 minutes 15 minutes wow look at that look at this guys the sauce has been reduced beautifully Look at that. So this is pretty much done, guys. Look at this. This is the Chinese braised eel. You see how thick the sauce is right here? This is some this is some good stuff right there, okay? So let's take the eel out of that plate. We're gonna taste some of that, man. Look at that. End of the end of the video right here. After you take it out, put a, a little bit of raw scallion and the pepper on top, right? And finally, look, ooh, all that thick sauce, man, goes right on top of the dish. Check this out, huh? Gotta give you guys a close view here. Ooh, man, all that thick sauce. Man, this is some beautiful stuff right here, guys. Wow, look at this, guys. So this is the final result for this evening. Look at this, I'm just gonna show you under the light so you guys know how beautiful this is, man. Braised, Chinese braised eel, man. I gotta tell you, this is some gorgeous stuff right here. What makes it edge? How you talking All right, let's taste it, man. We got the dish done right in front of us. I'm gonna taste a little bit. My dad is gonna taste a little bit too. I mean, I can tell you already that this thing is going to be delicious, you know? To get the, in the Asian spirit, I got a set of chopsticks, right? So let me first pierce the meat right over here. You see, I'm piercing the meat right in the middle here, right? So we got one piece for me right here, one piece of white eel. I gotta leave it on the side and one piece right here for my dad. We gotta do the tasting right now, boys. My dad is gonna be the first one to try this fish. Nichu is in the Beautiful. 
zero to ten. Leon to shuffle any Nikki to offer. Bother you. Ah, he says at least an eight, and he didn't even taste the fish yet. Okay, you try, you try, but. 尝尝你给我讲讲看好不好吃 ？I gotta let him taste. He's gonna give us his score zero to ten. 呃，肉嫩不嫩？鲜嫩。Oh, he said the meat is very good, very tender, delicious, huh? Hmm. Okay, let me let me taste a little bit too. All right. Oh, you speak in Minta. He's speaking Portuguese, like you can try now. Okay, so. Let us try a little bit of the American eel Chinese braised style. Okay, check this out. Huh? We gotta, we gotta try it out, boys. I'm sure this is gonna be delish, you know. But、uh, all right, here goes nothing. It's my first time, by the way, trying American eel. I ain't gonna lie to you guys. Okay, so. Oh hell yeah, son. This is oh, this is some good stuff, guys. Let me see, let me see. Mmm, the scallion is delicious too. All right, let me get a little piece of pepper here too. We gotta try a little piece of pepper. This is only for the people who like spicy food. All right. Oh, the galajo telal. The pepper is too spicy. All right. <clears throat> only eat it. If you can handle spicy, I can handle spicy, so I'm fine. But yeah, only add the pepper if you can handle spicy. All right. But <clears throat> all right, guys. So this is the final result here for the video. I gotta get myself some water. If you cook this at home, I hope you enjoyed. All right, it's a beautiful dish, right here. Beautiful American eel. All right, let's stop this video here, guys. I will see you guys next time. All right, tight lines. Until next time. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh hell yeah, it's a tau tau. Togging, togging, little tau tau out of season. But there we go. Oh, we got our first tau tau of the day. Look at that,、uh, beautiful lips right here. Let's take a shot and release this fish.